Hi, this is Spencer, your Tampa Bay wallpaper installer, coming to you from Apollo Beach, Florida. And what we're doing today is an accent wall, a feature wall behind a television. And so it's in the living room. And so you have this, this um, entertainment center display. And the carpenter wanted the wallpaper hanger to put up the wallpaper first before he installed uh, this stone. I'll show you the stone and then you'll see why the wallpaper has to go first. So, whoa. Can you imagine cutting wallpaper around this? Be very hard, not for paper, but for this type of paper, let me show you. And then you'll understand very quickly why we're installing the paper first before major construction goes takes place around. And this is a tie belt, Seagrass. Uh, this is a very fine wallpaper, grass cloth. And in order to, now if you've ever hung wallpaper before, uh, this is very thick, very thick stuff. And trying to cut this particular material around little grooves of stone, it would stress the color of it. It would also stress the integrity of the edge in that you would probably wind up cutting too much off or too little and then going back, trying to take the rest off when you should. And then it would stress the color. You would have frayed edges or edges that are just not long enough. Some wallpaper is just not practical for your particular uh, environment. For instance, I just hung wallpaper and I have a video on it of um, a, hand a hand painted wallpaper from Schumacher, very fine wallpaper. And um, the, the room in which I installed it was very old and the walls were not plumb at all. And we wound up having a mismatch on the alignment. And that was because the wall was so badly off. So what I did was I compensated for the, for the lack of plumb in the wall. And because the wallpaper was going to be behind a mirror, I simply did a horizontal slice and then let the wallpaper re relieve the stress from not matching, overlap itself, and then I cut off what overlapped. And that was going to be behind a mirror anyway. So it wasn't practical for that particular setting, but I made do. This, the, uh, the uh, carpenter in this particular job happens to be a perfectionist, a very knowledgeable uh, craftsman. And he said, have the wallpaper installed and hang the paper first, which I appreciated because some people just don't care. If he had put that stone up, I would have said, I, I can't hang that. I can't guarantee the job. So anyway, different wallpaper, different circumstances for each job. So what do we have? We have a setup. We have to protect the customer's uh, personal effects. So I have my 9 by 12 plastic covering the floor and their couches. You never know what might fall. So what I'm going to first do in order to make this installation work is to put on a membrane. And this is the membrane that I chose to use. This is a very good material. You could add a little water to it um, if it's too thick. Sometimes, uh, depending on the humidity in the room, uh, this stuff uh, has enough water in it. And if, there, if the air isn't moving, if you put it on too thick, it'll start coagulating and uh, drying in forms of drips that you have to scrape off. So anyway, this is from Romans. It's called Pro 999 or RX35. And this you can probably only find at your, uh, your local paint store. Sometimes a Lowe's or a Home Depot will have it, but it's hit or miss. So that is what I'm going to be putting on the wall surface. And so I'm going to put it on with a brush to get it into every nook and cranny. 
and then also with a roller to uh, speed up the process. <clears throat> but you do want to use a brush to get it into every nook and cranny because if your wallpaper fails, you know where it's going to fail? Along the whole perimeter. <clears throat> it's actually the most important place you would put it. The reason why we put it everywhere is so that the customer can take the wallpaper down when he or she wants to. Because if you don't put it on, it literally will, the glue will become one with the paint underneath it. And if that surface wasn't prepared properly, it'll all become one with the plaster on the sheetrock and then rip off the plaster and parts of the paper on the sheetrock. And then this is why people don't like hanging wallpaper because of this problem, because the walls aren't prepared properly. Now, if you're using a roller, depending on where you've stored the roller, there's a very good purdy roller. It's a half inch ultra. These are not cheap rollers. This lays out the material very well, but it has little things on it. It has to be cleaned off. And how do you clean a roller? One of the ways you can do it, you can take it out to the yard and spray it with a, a jet stream that you get in the garden center at Lowe's. It's five bucks. You can buy this little thing that goes on it and it comes out like a jet stream. But if you don't do that, you can opt for using tape. You can wrap the roller in tape and then pull the tape off, or you can simply do this. <clears throat> you can do this. I'm just taping it to my ladder, and I'm going back and forth. See that? Let me just show you what comes off onto the tape when you do this. You'd be surprised. I did it on my truck before I came in, and I said, let me show the folks what, what comes off of this roller, just so you're convinced that you have to do this. See what I'm doing? Just rolling it on here. I was actually taught this trick by a guy named Jose up in Brooklyn. We painted uh, this condo in Bed-Stuy. So I said, uh, Jose, you're gonna clean off your roller? So he pulled out his tape, he put it on a, a, a fixed object. And I said, wow, that was pretty nice. Now, let me show you. Aside from what came off of this before I went on video, Look at the mess on my roller, okay? Now, if you don't do it, you're gonna wind up with that mess in your primer, okay? And you, you know, you don't want that. So, when you put your tape back, just put a little edge on it so that you can get it off again. So now, am I ready? I suppose I am. Let me make sure my pan's cleaned out. When you're dripping your paint into the pan, uh, if you don't do it extremely slowly, it it's, splashes back up at you, and it, 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 it will, I call it getting back at you for not using your head, you know? Anyway, I'm using a uh, four-inch purdy brush to just get into my edges. Remember, this is, this is not a finished product. It doesn't matter if I get a little on the thing to my right or left. It does give you an edge to work with, where you can just put it on with precision. And that's the whole point of the, uh, the paintbrush. I had to get out my 10-foot ladder for this job because our ceiling, uh, the wall is quite high. And so, but let me just talk to you as I do this. Um, what? What you're going to do here is you're going to start the wallpaper layout from the middle of the wall. And what I mean by that is you don't necessarily have to physically start hanging in the middle, but the layout, the planning has to be based on the middle, okay? And so you would take your width of the wall, right? And you find the center. If you can't divide quarter or eighths, simply go on your calculator. For example, if you come up with 87 and, um, you know, uh, 87 and a half, for example, you obviously you know that it's half of that would be plus a quarter. So uh, don't, don't just wing it. You want to get as close as possible. In my case, there's a television going over the half point. 
And so when I, I measured my half, the, uh, the person who put the outlets there had already measured it, so I'm going off of his measurement. But what I was saying is if you come up with uh, 87 and a quarter inches, obviously you would say 87.25 divided by 2. And then you'll come up with another fraction. If you get it to the nearest eighth, I think you're good, okay? But don't just wing it and, and say, well, 87 is close to 90, so 45 is the middle. Don't do that. You'll notice that. You'll notice three inches. And so will everybody else. They have tools, actually, that can find the half point. They can actually measure how, how long your distance is. It's amazing. Stanley puts them out. I found one in Walmart. 20 bucks. It's a, uh, it's a digital tape measure. And it stores up to three measurements at a time. So if you measure, you put it up against the wall, it accounts for the width of the tool itself, which is three inches, as does a regular conventional tape measure. If you look on the bottom of a tape measure, you'll see three and a half. What does that mean? That means that the tool itself is three and a half. So when you put it up against the wall, add three and a half to the number measurement you get on the tape. So anyway, what does this membrane do? This membrane keeps your wallpaper in place for the life of the installation. That's what it does. It's sticky, and so it takes the place of your wall, so to speak, that the wallpaper glue attaches itself to this membrane rather than your wall. <laughs> and so that's why it's so good to do. Now, somebody watched one of my videos yesterday and said, this is a bunch of uh, unnecessary information, something to that effect, some negative critical remark. So I looked at it, and it was uh, my video, one of my videos on wallpapering around a window cell. And he said, just go on this video. I said, what are you talking about? He said, go on this video and you'll, you'll figure it out. The wallpaper that I was hanging was a pattern, very, very detailed pattern wallpaper. And it necessarily had to continue onto the windowsill. This guy, very arrogantly, sends me off to a video that was done years ago by some guy who looks like he's been long since retired from hanging wallpaper. It's a green wallpaper the guy's hanging, without any pattern. And he says, just look at this video and you'll figure it out. Well, if you don't have a pattern wallpaper, all the rules for precision go out the window. You could literally take a non-pattern wallpaper Cut the sheet in half, hang it right over your window. It doesn't matter. There's no pattern. So the guy really didn't know what he was talking about, you know. When you make these YouTube videos, you take a lot of time out of your regular work in order to share your knowledge with people. And then you know how YouTube is. There's, there's just so many people who have negative remarks that instead of just keeping it to themselves, they have to share their <coughs> negativity with you. Which I wouldn't mind if it was uh, productive, but it was absolutely incorrect. Comparing a non-patterned wallpaper with the particular installation I was doing at the time shows me that he actually needs my video. It was kind of funny. I guess the moral of the story is if you don't like this video, that's okay. That's fine. Anyway, I do these videos because wallpaper is big now, okay? And 
I have learned so much from you two. I'm going to tell you who taught me a ton. The Idaho painter. He is Chris Berry. The guy is extremely knowledgeable. All right? And for a regular guy, he knows how to run a business, generate work, sell his business. He's, he's incredibly intelligent when it comes to painting and business. And so I share with you the man's name. Also, another guy, his name, his YouTube channel, D.I.F. Crown. D.I.F.? D.F. Crown? D.F. Crown? D.F. Crown. Very, very, I mean, this guy, is, his work is amazing. That's two. Number three, Kirk Giordano uh, from Alameda, California. He's a uh, professional uh, cement plasterer, or what people call stucco guy. But he, he actually uh, clarifies that he's a, he's a stucco plaster. He's a plaster, cement plaster contractor. I actually uh, spoke to him. I spoke to Chris Berry. You know, these guys are pros. They're actually really good to know. Also, another one, Leah from CJ and Drill. Really good contractor, very knowledgeable. She's, uh, she's awesome. I learned a lot of stuff from her. And there's one other. Paul Ricalde, R-A-C-A-L-D-E. He's a fireman from California. These, I believe I just gave you five names. Uh, these people are very knowledgeable. They help me out a lot. But not with wallpaper. Um, that's my thing. Their thing is uh, CJ and Drill and uh, Paul Ricalde, general construction carpenters. Uh, DF Crown, he's, his main thing is woodwork. Beautiful work. Chris Berry, painter. Anyway, I share you their names so that you can go and patronize their channel and see what they have to offer you. If you're looking at this channel, you're somebody who wants to know how to do things. If, even if you don't do it yourself, you want to know how it's done. I, this is the end of the frame. This is frame one of what I will call a feature wall. And I'm going to put the name of the, uh, the uh, grass cloth in it. It's beautiful grass cloth, by the way. Beautiful. I love this color. I love the dark, rich color of uh, uh, grass cloth. Beautiful stuff. Okay, uh, if you're cutting this stuff, get yourself a 18-millimeter uh, sharp knife, an Ulfa blade, an Ulfa knife. They're very good. It has a multi, multi-tool function on it. You can actually use the end of it for a screwdriver. When you're up high and you don't, you know, the less things you got to grab at when you're hanging on a ladder, the better. See that end of it? This is an Olfa knife, O-L-F-A. This uh, works as a flathead screwdriver, and you can take off the fixture out that covers. Anyway, this is Spencer, your Tampa Bay wallpaper installer, coming to you from uh, Apollo Beach, and uh, this is frame one. Please subscribe to my channel. Please click on like, and I'll continue to share these videos with you. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.